What's up mga kuya? Welcome back to the channel. So this is my full review of the Poco M3. So I've been using it for more than a week now. And take note, this is my opinion. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is the best budget smartphone of the year. For me again. That's it. Thanks for watching. Also, take note that my definition of a budget smartphone is any phone that's under $200 US, under around 10,000 Philippine pesos. And by the end of this video, I'll tell you why this is my pick for the best budget smartphone of the year. Now, there are two variants of the Poco M3. Both of them have uh, 4 gigs of memory. There's a 64 gig variant and the one that I bought is the 128 gig variant. I'm just gonna say just buy the 64 gig variant of this if you were planning on buying this as I think that's what most people will probably buy. The only difference is the 64 gig has UFS 2.1 storage while the 128 gig has UFS 2.2. And while there's just a wee wee bit of difference in speed boost in write speeds on UFS 2.2, that's not something you're gonna notice in day-to-day -day use. Unless you really want or really need that 128 gig capacity, then for me, just go for the 64 gig variant of this. And the main reason why I chose the 128 gig variant is because of the early bird price. So most likely, these will be the prices of the Poco M3 right now, 6990 and 7 990 respectively for the 64 gig and 128 gig variant unless they're on sale again. The one that I have is the Power Black and is also available in a cool blue and poco yellow option. Of course, here are the specs. You guys can just pause the video. The main specs that you guys really need to know is that huge mammoth 6000 mAh battery with 18 watts of fast charging and the unexpectedly good performing Snapdragon 662 chipset. And take note mga kuya, anything that I say that I don't like about the Poco M3 isn't justified like it's pretty much just me nitpicking at that point. So sa mga magko-comment ng, oh what do you expect? It's a budget smartphone. So far, this is the largest battery capacity that I've had on a smartphone at, again, 6,000 milliamps. And I wasn't expecting the M3 to be just 9.6 millimeters thick, so very nice. And that huge battery is a huge contributor to the solid build quality of the M3. Pretty much no flex on the phone. Although, take note that this is still a budget phone, so for material choices, you have plastic for the main frame with a faux leather finish at the back, which I really like because it doesn't scratch easily and isn't a fingerprint magnet like with the glossy plastic finish on my Redmi Note 9. Although this outer part around the triple camera setup with the Poco branding is actually glossy plastic. To my surprise, it actually doesn't scratch as easily as I initially thought with me just casually placing this on any surface. But I would definitely use a case or a skin if you want this to be scratch free. And while I would have preferred it if Poco just made this the same faux leather finish, I have to admit this is actually an attractive design for the M3. At the right side, you have the power button slash fingerprint scanner along with the volume rack which are nice and clicky by the way. The side-mounted fingerprint scanner feels a bit sluggish but you know it's functional and accurate for the most part. At the left side you have the SIM card tray for dual SIMs and a micro SD card slot. And even though Poco didn't indicate anything about splash or water resistance, we do have a rubber seal around the outer part of the SIM card tray so I think the Poco M3 is splash resistant. At least, I think so. So that should give you a peace of mind when using this outside. At the top, we have the IR Blaster, two holes for the top speaker grill, a 3.5mm jack, which honestly, I would have preferred to be at the bottom, but oh well. And the secondary microphone. At the bottom, we have the main microphone, USB Type-C charging port, and the main speaker grill. Yes, we do technically have a stereo speaker setup here, and I'll talk about that technically and audio quality in a little bit. At the back, we have the triple camera setup and single LED flash covered by glass with super triple camera written here. At the front, we have the 6.53 inch IPS LCD display covered by Corning Gorilla Glass 3. At the top, we have a teardrop notch with the front facing 8 megapixel sensor. Above that is the earpiece speaker grill and no, that's not a notification LED on the right side but the IR proximity sensor. The side bezels are fairly thin with a sizable chin. So I'm gonna put my thoughts on audio quality and the top and bottom bezels in this part of my review. While technically, again, this is a stereo speaker setup and while also, the output is really impressive, especially for a budget phone speaker test. Output is loud and clear, maybe the best that I've heard from a smartphone in a while. The weird thing is, the output from the top speaker grill is significantly weaker compared to the bottom speaker grill.
And no, this isn't a problem with my specific unit as you remember from my unboxing and first impressions video. I also got to unbox and try out my friend's Poco M3, so yeah, same result. And I guess I kind of expected that considering the size of the top speaker grille, they're just these two small holes compared to the larger bottom speaker grille. So it is kind of weird at first, uh, especially using this in landscape mode. If you're listening to a video, let's say with a proper stereo separation, since again, uh, the top speaker grille is significantly weaker. But for most things, it's actually an enjoyable experience, uh, especially when listening to music as the loudness of the bottom speaker grille uh, kind of makes it sounds like a sort round sound experience. Kind of. So still, great job with Poco for the speaker setup here on the M3. And I guess the only thing really that I don't like about the uh, speaker setup here is that they're side mounted so you can easily block them. Which leads me to my thoughts on the top and bottom bezel. So I'm still quite partial to the notch or hole punch thing. Honestly, I don't care if my smartphone still has a top and bottom bezel as long as you utilize that extra space. Like with what I mentioned with all my smartphone reviews so far, put dual front facing speakers with that extra space giving the user a proper and really enjoyable audio experience and honestly i wouldn't mind paying more for that which actually makes me want to buy an htc1 m9 just for that reason honestly dual stereo front facing speakers on a smartphone is something that very few people nowadays care about uh, including me um, since everyone else is focusing too much on design so xiaomi or poco hopefully you consider that in your future smartphones but again that's my opinion in this case with the poco m3 since you do have a sizable bottom chin Poco could have easily placed a notification LED here somewhere but yeah. Poco did use a good quality DAC for the 3.5mm headphone jack. Call quality is great. I was able to hear the person I was talking to loud and clear and the same goes on their end also. Hopefully that doesn't leave a bad taste in your mouth as we're moving on to the really good stuff. The display is again a 6.53 inch IPS LCD display with a resolution of 2340 by 1080 so you have a solid 1080p display with 400 nits of max brightness which is fine even under direct sunlight. Colors are relatively neutral but I actually prefer using the standard option in the display settings as for me, colors are warmer and more pleasing to the eye. Viewing angles are great also, a little to no color shift even at extreme angles. Overall, really good display even for a budget phone. So you do have a solid camera setup here on the Poco M3 for the triple camera setup, a 48 megapixel main sensor with an f1.8 aperture, a 2 megapixel depth sensor, and a 2 megapixel macro sensor which honestly I'd care less about. Pictures taken with good lighting with the main sensor are pretty good. You get nice and sharp photos, maybe a bit oversaturated and dynamic range is okay for the most part. Photos taken in low light fall apart also considering this doesn't have OAS. Pictures looks up with a decent amount of noise reduction but luckily you do have a dedicated night mode which just gives you an overall better and actually impressive low light shots as long as you don't mind holding your phone still for a second or two. Pictures taken on the 8 megapixel front facing camera gives you some nice and detailed selfies again with good lighting and really impressive edge detection with the portrait mode and here's the video quality so this is how the video quality looks and sounds like on the poco m3 uh, with the main sensor main 48 megapixel sensor and uh, yeah video quality is i would describe as mediocre or just okay, unfortunately, just like with the Xiaomi Redmi Note 9. So I'm not sure what Poco did here, but colors are way too oversaturated for my taste. There's no stabilization here, and this is how it looks like when I'm running. Okay, so now this is like the vlog test for the Poco M3 on the front-facing camera. And ironically, this is actually a much better quality compared to the... Uh, main 48 megapixel sensor uh, the colors as you can see are more neutral here and uh, while sharpness is okay for the most part um, yeah nothing too special uh, it's okay it's good for blogging actually so if you were thinking of buying this phone for blogging um, using the front facing camera mainly then yeah it's actually quite good for that so yeah for a budget phone you're getting a solid camera setup here and moving on to my two favorite parts about the poco m3 performance and battery performance for an entry-level chipset is pretty impressive the snapdragon 662 paired with an adreno 610 gpu is a solid combination it doesn't lag or stutter as much as i was expecting it to be uh, browsing through the ui is smooth for the most part opening and closing apps and with a respectable 4 gigs of memory it's able to multitask with little to no hiccups i was 
was more surprised with gaming on this. So aside from Genshin Impact, which is technically playable, it's not an enjoyable experience even in the lowest graphical settings. Aside from that, pretty much any other game in the Play Store is perfectly playable. Even in the high graphic settings at 60 FPS on Wild Rift is just a smooth experience. It doesn't overheat when gaming or even when charging the device. Of course, we have MIUI 12 on top of Android 10 and you get the usual additional features you would get with Android 10. So yeah, regarding performance and software, it's really good. Unexpectedly good to be honest, so good optimization from Poco. And last but not the least is that Mamet. 6,000 mAh battery, so I'm just gonna say uh, this is easily a two-day battery life for someone like me. So I would describe myself as a medium to heavy user, so my day is usually a combination of social media, YouTube, some gaming, and picture taking with more than five hours of screen on time and just ending the day regularly with around 60%. If you're a light user who's mainly on social media, uh, texting, calling, listening to music or podcasts, then this could potentially be a three-day battery life. Again, potentially. Uh, as long as you're using it maybe three to four hours a day. Although if you're a hardcore mobile gamer who plays Wild Rift and Mobile Legends pretty much all day. And yes, I did use Wild Rift and Mobile Legends in the same sentence without getting angry, fanboying, or being cancerous. Then expect to get an average of nine hours of screen on time and charging your phone by the end of the day with just gaming on the M3. So yeah, battery on the Poco M3 is an A+ or S actually. Even though it does take 2 hours and 15 minutes to charge from empty to full with that 18 watts of fast charging, uh, just charge it overnight. No complaints here. And yeah, as far as my opinion goes in this being the best budget smartphone of the year, uh, for a budget phone, it's actually the complete package. And I know that there are other great budget smartphones out there. The Poco M3 has the additional touches like the solid speakers, solid optimization for the software and battery, and the IR blaster for controlling your TVs and appliances. So yeah, this is my pick for the best budget smartphone of the year. Again, just go for the 64GB variant unless you really need that 128GB capacity. Obviously, I'm easily recommending this to those who are looking for maybe the best smartphone experience for under $200. And I guess this is also like a guide for the Poco M3 as a gift idea for Christmas or pretty much any occasion. So yeah, that's the Poco M3. I'll leave the links in the description if you guys want to buy this. Good job, Poco and Xiaomi also. I'm not sure. Of course, the good stuff, use my uh, Shopee, Lazada, or Banggood affiliate link if you're buying anything from them. It helps support the channel. And of course, like my Facebook page for gaming live streams and other posts and updates that I don't post on YouTube. Stay safe, mga kuya. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.